humanism is all about being human. Um, we are very familiar with this image here, which is the uh, image of the human form by da Vinci. Um, of course, before the Renaissance happened, we did have human beings portrayed in pictures, but the Renaissance really brought us up the first time where the human beings and the realism of a human being was a central part of the art and culture. Moving on from that, uh, we also started to study in detail uh, the human body, uh, both its parts and how its individual parts were connected with each other. So we started to get an idea of anatomy and physiology. Um, we got this understanding of anatomy and physiology mainly from Arabic texts. So moving back to art and this idea of individualism. So here you can see a piece of uh, Renaissance art. You can see that Mary, as she's depicted here, is a real person. She doesn't have that zombie-like look to her. In fact, she's looking down the loving uh, gaze at her child. Um, overall, the picture does look very, very real. There's that 3D perspective in there. The artist has taken the, taken the trouble as well to recreate the landscape in the background so we can see not only a accurate representation of humans are important with individualism and humanism we can also see that the landscape and nature becomes important um, we're concerned with detail here you can see that the artist has went to great lengths to represent in detail exactly how this piece of cloth perhaps silk actually folds up and what it would look like if a real person would be able to wear it so all of these things with the individual, individualism, the humanism, and the natural landscape, and the 3D, and the perspective, gives it a real life, set, a real, uh, real life setting. Now, compare this to with the sort of pictures that you would see um, before the Renaissance. Here we can see uh, that zombie-type look. Um, the baby is extremely ugly. In fact, the baby doesn't actually look like a baby. It looks like um, a, a fully grown man. Um, you will see the uh, perspectives on the face and the way that the, face, the proportions of the face are all wrong. And it just doesn't look, work, doesn't look real. So we can see that there's not really individualism here. There's not really humanism here. Um, it's very hard for us to connect with what the uh, characters in this pa painting are actually thinking. If you look at the background as well, you will see that there is no attempt whatsoever to uh, represent nature. There's not really detail. A lot of details are, are simply not there. Now that compare, compare this to that cute baby, here we've got a Renaissance type of image. Um, obviously we don't know what this cute baby is thinking but the proportions are right look at the baby's hair um, a lot of detail has gone into making that hair look realistic the baby has a real stare in it it looks like a real person I don't know this baby could be thinking about something as simple as what to have for lunch but they've got that real look and that real emotions in, in what the baby is thinking so as I said before, a lot of that scientific knowledge came from um, manuscripts um, from both the Romans, the ancient Romans, the Greeks and the Arabs. So it's a rediscovery and reinvention of these ideas and taking those ideas up to the next level. One of the main people to do this, discover those, de uh, those texts was Francesco P Petrarch. And here he is. Um, he went to great length to find the original manuscripts, interpret them, and help, help Europe move through into the Renaissance and have that rebirth. So here we can see um, the library in Florence that he uh, helped to establish. Um, it's not only a library, um, it's also a very ornately decorated library. The artwork that we can see there, uh, it has those Renaissance, lots of detail, people doing real things, people doing ordinary things, things that we can associate with. But also the architecture itself, we got the arches. Now the arches was something from classical Rome and classical Greece that architects started using uh, again. Also Cicero, there was a renewed interest in democracy, or at least democracy if you were a man. And there was a think of, uh, 
uh, people start to thinking about restructuring the way that they govern things. So a lot of this is individualism, and you can see the individual has become um, increasingly important. And so that gives rise, as I said, to the idea of classicism. Classicism is reinventing, is uh, using those ancient Greek and Roman ideas. And we can see that in the art, we can see that in the concept of individualism, we can see that in the concept of democracy, if you are lucky to be part of that democratic framework uh, in ancient Greece. But it's, very, it's going back to those ancient texts, rediscovering them, reinterpreting them, and putting them into the Renaissance. So, uh, we can, as I said before, we can see that in our columns, in a lot of the buildings that we have. Uh, the classical column here, we can see the classical uh, Greek uh, column. Um, there's number one, the larch. Oh, sorry, no, that's from Monty Python, isn't it? Sorry, I mean the arch. Um, that's one of those classical things that, that we have. Um, still, we have in our architecture as being very, very important, not just to hold the building up, but also decorative arches, arches that are don't actually hold the building up, but we still put fake arches into our building because it looks nice, or at least in, in, in the Western world. So as I said before, um, the other thing is democracy. So this is about real people doing real things and taking uh, charge of their life, and really the idea of individualism. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to humanism and classicism.